Hey guys, I have a special kind of a bonus video for you. I meet the coolest people in our classes. And in our last pro class, one of the students brought me this piece. Uh, it's actually concrete that was put into a silicone mold to look like a piece of wood. It's just amazing. Uh, when you look at it and it's white, you really don't see much detail in it. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some glazes and we're gonna transform this piece of concrete into a realistic piece of wood. And then I'm gonna make a really cool bench out of it. So stay tuned and enjoy the video. All right, so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be basically just putting glazes on this. And there's a million different glazes out there. You can buy a pre-made glaze, which I have right here. It's Rust-Oleum Decorative Glaze. It's an antiquing glaze. Java brown is actually the color. I love general finishes glazes. They're one of my very favorite, but any kind of glaze, you can make your own glaze with latex paint, Floetrol, and water. So there's a lot of ways to make a glaze. We're gonna get started and just start putting the glaze on and pulling it off. So I'm just using an old chip brush and I'm getting in all the little nooks and crannies. So this was such a cool piece. When I saw it, I thought I can really do something fun with this. And so I'm just really super humbled that he actually gave me this piece. All right, so I don't do too much. Glazes have a long open time. So you can go quite a ways before you start wiping off. But if you wait too long, what'll happen is the glaze will start to get tacky and it'll be harder for you to pull it off and create that really cool design. All right, so this is about how much I wanna work at one time. Now I'm gonna just start pulling it off. Now I've just got some paper towels. My favorite thing to use is cheesecloth, but this is a really rough surface and cheesecloth I believe would get really kind of caught in it. I think shop towels would be really probably the best thing on this finish. We're gonna start pulling that glaze off and I'm not gonna pull it off the same everywhere. Some I'm gonna leave a little more glaze, some I'm gonna pull a little more glaze off. That's what's gonna really give this piece the realistic look. So once I kind of pull it off, I'm just gonna kind of tap it and go from there. Look at the difference between the uncovered white area and just this first layer of glaze. So we'll just continue this and go down. So I'll show you on this edge where we have some voids, highs and lows, that's when you really start to see it look realistic because that glaze is sitting down in those low areas and it's giving me a more opaque finish. So that's how we get that depth there. And we'll just continue. Now you can come in here with multiple color glazes and that's actually what I was gonna do, but I'm actually liking just this one glaze because I can pull different amounts of that glaze off and actually kind of build my depth. Now I'm not gonna put epoxy over this finish. I am gonna put the ultimate top coat because glaze has to have some sort of a sealer. Glaze by itself is not uh, strong enough or durable enough to not seal it with something. And because this is gonna be going into the direct sunlight, that's why I'm not gonna be using epoxy. Now, you wanna always keep a wet edge. So as you start to add glaze and take glaze away, you don't want that edge to get dry because then when you go back in, you're gonna see a distinct line. So keeping that edge wet. And then also what I'll do, instead of coming back and starting with my glaze right here, I'll start off the wet edge and then I'll work my way back into it. Now you can do this technique and you've got, you guys have seen me do it where I use the texture medium. I run my decorative roller through it and I create that texture. This is the same sort of technique that I use on those finishes and I've done quite a few of those on countertops. You can also come in here and kind of create some texture, additional texture, once you've kind of wiped that glaze off by just stippling your rag or your paper towel. 
All right, so now that I have the whole thing glazed, what's really good about working with glazes is that the open time is so long that if I see something I wanna maybe lighten up a little bit, I can just take some water and one little area, if I wanna lighten it up, I can start pulling off that glaze so that I have highlights on the top. So what I'm doing, I'm hitting those high areas and I'm just giving it more depth. So now we really have some variations of our dark and our light. If I take too much off, I can always go back and bring in some more. All right, pro tip guys. I've been standing in this one uh, area getting one angle. So I'm gonna walk around, make sure you look at all your pieces that you do from different angles and different perspectives. So I really love this. Did you see how when I hit it with the paper towel, how it kind of brought the area here white and kind of highlighted that area? This just turned out so cool. I just love it. Just with one coat of glaze, we'll let this dry overnight, come back with the ultimate top coat in matte, let that dry, and I will be ready to have me an outdoor seating area. I hope you like this little bonus video. I like bringing little odd and in type videos to you guys so that you see there are so many creative ways to make really fun projects. Let me know in the comments below if you like to see this type of video. I'd also like you to subscribe to our channel, click on the bell so that every time we post a video, you guys know about it. Check out our website, rk3designs.com for a full line of epoxy, supplies, and tools. And remember guys, don't be scared. Move forward and be creative. See you next week.